If there's one thing holding you back on YouTube, it's probably not even the algorithm, it's probably your thumbnails. Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake of RobertoBlake.com helping you create something awesome today. And today we're gonna talk about YouTube thumbnails. This is another YouTube advice video. Uh, I usually do these on Fridays, but I sneak them in sometimes uh, other days of the week. So. If you're trying to grow your YouTube channel, you're struggling as a YouTuber, or you're trying to grow your online business and leverage YouTube as marketing, then you might wanna subscribe. I started doing YouTube videos seriously and on a regular basis in July of 2013. It seems like forever ago now, but uh, one of the advantages that I came to the YouTube platform with was mastery of Photoshop. Uh, so I had chops in Photoshop and that meant that I could do really good YouTube thumbnails. My first videos on YouTube actually revolved a lot around tutorials for video editing in Adobe Premiere Pro and also uh, tutorials in Adobe Photoshop. So those are skills that you actually need as a YouTuber. You need to be able to make great thumbnails, but you also need to be able to edit great videos. And you know, I came to the platform with those skills, but they're also the thing that I wanted to teach other people. Not everyone has those skills. I was making videos and doing Photoshop before YouTube ever existed, and that's not everybody. So I wanted to give you some practical advice. Uh, I think we'll do this as five tips that can actually make your YouTube thumbnails better. And then also I have a tool that can help you if you're just someone who's not good at design and visual art. So one of the first tips is going to be mastering your software. You need visual editing software in order to make YouTube thumbnails and to make them good. The obvious choice is Adobe Photoshop, which is currently a subscription that's $10 a month. You also get another photo editing program called Adobe Lightroom, which is more geared toward photographers. For 10 bucks a month, it's a great deal, but not everyone can afford it for some reason or another, or they just don't like the subscription model. That's fine. There is another great option available to you. If you can't do Photoshop, the next best option is something called Affinity Photo. Affinity Photo is a standalone application for both Mac and PC, just like Photoshop is for Mac and PC. While it's not an Adobe killer, it does have have a lot of the same features and a streamlined interface and it's only 50 bucks for life no subscription model the beauty of this is affinity photo also opens photoshop files which means that you can still work uh, within that same type of file system you can still use all the templates that you can find online for photoshop or any other resources you had if you used to be a photoshop user you still get to use them in affinity photo if you switch over so that's an option for you finally there's the free option GIMP, which is a graphic image manipulation program, I think is what the acronym stands for. GIMP has been around forever and GIMP is open source, but you know what that means. If it's open source and free, then it's also clunky and is not updated very often. So that's what you live with. You get what you pay for. Mastering these software tools means that you can make your thumbnails better. It also means you can make them faster. And the more you understand the tool that you're using, the better off your life is gonna be. If I didn't use Photoshop literally every single day, Premiere Pro every single day, I don't know that I would be able to do nearly as many things or as much content as I would because the process would just take forever. So once you master your tools, and you don't have to learn every single tool in the program, once you don't have to learn every single menu system, you have to really focus on the ones that apply to you and get really good at them. So I, I think that that makes a huge difference and it will save you so much time. So once you choose a tool, watch as many tutorials as you can for like 30 minutes or an hour a day, and then spend like every other day working in it for an hour, not just to make something, but to just try to understand it a little bit better. And I think that that will definitely help you. Tip number two is more of a design tip. Don't make cluttered thumbnails. Cluttered thumbnails, they are very overwhelming and they have no real priority to them, are the most annoying thing in the world and no one likes clicking on them and they're just a headache to look at. Minimalism is the key here, ladies and gentlemen. You wanna know about minimalism? Look at the design of Apple. Look at the marketing of Apple and Samsung and Microsoft. Less is more. Less is often more. Simple and clean thumbnails go a long way, especially when you're just getting started. Don't try to be be fancy, it's overkill. Just like trying to be too fancy with your YouTube videos when jump cuts will get a lot done for you, uh, it makes a difference. I got to 200 and like what, 80,000 subscribers without being that fancy. I'm good, but I decided that I wanted to do a certain amount of output. I wanted to not throw eight hours a day into this. And so minimalism is your friend. It's also your friend in design when it comes to these thumbnails. So take that seriously. Speaking of good design, let's talk about fonts. Tip number three, better typography, better fonts. And 
make sure that you're not using too many of them. Here's how to do better with your thumbnails with regard to fonts. Number one, stop putting red text on black backgrounds. We can't read it, it doesn't work. Learn color theory, that's another tip, but learn color theory. Uh, the other thing I would definitely say is make your fonts big enough if you're going to bother to use them. Make them big enough to read because 60% of traffic is coming from the YouTube mobile app now, which means that these things are really teeny tiny. So we need to be able to read them. It needs to be able to kind of be like the billboard test. If something would make a good billboard, it would make a good thumbnail. So really just understand that we don't wanna squint. I usually wear glasses. Uh, make your text big enough to read, make it stand off of the background, try not to run the text over anything that's really too distracting. Like I said, that clutter, it doesn't help. Get better at typography. And by the way, do not use more than two or three different fonts in a thumbnail. It's confusing, it's distracting, and it usually doesn't look good. And if you don't have a background graphic design, probably stick to one or two fonts and that's it. Also, Everything doesn't always have to be the same size. I'll do a whole video dedicated probably to each of these tips at some point, but I just wanna run you through that because it makes a huge difference. Earlier, I mentioned color theory. I'm gonna give you a good hack for those of you who don't know what color combinations to put together and you don't wanna learn like color theory or use a color wheel, here's a cheap trick you can use. Go look up a lot of different sports teams look at the color pairings for their uniforms, steal those color pairings, and all of a sudden, you'll know what colors to put with what. They've already done the research for you. It is literally that simple. You also wanna use, in a lot of cases, colors that really stand out against the white background of YouTube. We do have YouTube's dark mode now, but most people still use the default. They don't know about that. So something that doesn't stand out against a white background probably doesn't make for a good thumbnail. You could also use borders around your thumbnails to help give them a little bit more attention. So just like look at things like that that are eye-catching because you need that attention in order to be able to stand out and to get that initial click that's gonna get you more views and get you more subscribers. Color can really help with that. Tip number five is context. Thumbnails have to tell a story. Thumbnails have to entice us, trigger curiosity, trigger an emotion. Uh, they have to lead us down a path. They have to be something that's worthy of clicking on. Instead of thinking about clickbait, think about click worthy. Click bait versus click worthy is a video that I need to do. Something that's worthy of our click something that is exciting to us, but also you have to deliver on that promise, meaning that if the video has nothing to do with this, then it's clickbait. If you were somehow misleading or deceptive, that's clickbait. Your goal is to use a portion of the story to help you decide what would make a good thumbnail around this that is the most exciting point in the story that I can highlight in some way and then that is what is going to be click worthy. So I would encourage you to not take just the still images out of your videos and make a thumbnail. That doesn't get it done. I would say that maybe you take advantage of photography. I mean, you're already using a camera to make YouTube videos. Well, like what's the point of like not doing a little photo that's dedicated to telling the story, right? It's just a little bit of extra work. I think that that could go a long way. I think that making sure your thumbnail tells the right story, conveys the message of your video, will help you. Finally, let's talk about something I made for those of you who need to make good YouTube thumbnails like right now, and you don't have the time to master uh, software or learn all the design chops and all the design terminology and techniques, I did make something that can help you called the YouTube Starter Kit. The YouTube Starter Kit is a bundle of Photoshop templates and other assets and resources. I'm even going to add some stuff that's Canva friendly for those of you who wanna use free tools like Canva. And you can use this to make really good YouTube thumbnails. I've already done most of the work for you and you just have to drop in your photos. So take those photos or your text in terms of just typing in what you want. I've already done all the typography. I've already done all the special effects. I've already done all of the color. It, it's right there for you. So um, there's a bunch of those things, but I've also done it for YouTube channel artwork. I've done it for lower thirds for you guys that you could go ahead and bring into your editor and you can animate it yourself. And I also have some other great little bonuses in there, including uh, links and resources for free music, hundreds upon hundreds of songs that you could download for free, and and also the best 100 fonts that you can use for your YouTube videos. So the YouTube Starter Kit is something that is a product that I sell over on Awesome Creator Academy. I'm gonna go ahead and link you guys over to the YouTube Starter Kit and you might wanna check the description to see if there's any kind of discount or sale going on right now because if there is, I would've updated this video, put that link in there. So you're welcome.
I made this insanely affordable because if you had to buy individual templates, you'd be paying $5 to $20 a piece, and I'm giving you 100 of these, and it's usually for 99 bucks, so you're getting over 100 assets, because I keep adding to it, and they're coming out to less than a dollar a piece up front, and I also might be running a sale, so if that's something you wanna take advantage of, you can just go ahead and grab it from the link down below, but if you wanna go ahead and do it yourself like I did, then I've got a ton of tutorials on this channel that can help you make better YouTube thumbnails, that can help you with graphic design, that can teach you Photoshop and other tools. In fact, if there are other graphic design tools that you guys want me to cover, you want me to do more with Affinity Photo, or you wanna do YouTube thumbnails that are based in photography, and you want me to give you some of my tips, what lenses to use, I have videos covering that as well. So. Again, if you don't wanna buy the YouTube Starter Kit and you wanna do this on your own, I'm gonna help you do that too. So, maybe that's something that you wanna to subscribe to the channel and check out. Question of the day, aside from thumbnails, what's holding you back in YouTube? I think some of you actually might be struggling with YouTube analytics. Should I make more videos covering that? Let me know in the comment section, what's holding you back in YouTube? Like this video if you like it, don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other awesome content on the channel. As always, you guys, thanks so very much for watching and don't forget, Go out there and create something awesome today. Take care.